by standing and saying amen. Hallelujah. Um, Isaiah 10 and at verse 27, verse John 2 and 27. Um, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. First John 2 and verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. And is true. And is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Hallelujah. Today our subject that our minds may be together, the anointing that destroys yokes. The anointing that destroys yokes. Now God our Father, as we stand before you today to declare your word, we thank you for these your people that you have touched to come into the house of prayer. We pray that we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is sound, which is right, which is true. Anoint this your poor servant, hallelujah, with a voice to speak to your people. Give them ears to hear. They may yield some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. These blessings we ask in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. 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 The anointing that destroys your use. All of our life, most of us have heard the word anoint. Anointing. Or anointing. We have all heard people attest or affirm that some preacher was anointed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, they were praying under the anointing. They preached in the anointing. Hear about anointing and anointing. Yet, how many times? Do we pass around terminology that we don't really understand? Mm -hmm. That if somebody really, a man, had to explain to you, or you had to explain the terminology that you were using, could you effectively communicate what it means? Praise the Lord. Such is the case with the anointing. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Important that we understand. It's important, praise the Lord, that it makes sense to us because the anointing is important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yet, how can you possess something that you do not understand? Amen. How do you know when you are anointed? Hallelujah. How do you know, amen, when someone else is operating under the anointing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, because we were dancing and shouting, the whole church was anointed today. Praise the Lord. And if that's how you would judge anointing, you could go to the nightclub. Amen. Yes. And they're also dancing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But is that the anointing? 
They are the, under the influence of a spirit. Amen. It's just not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So the anointing, praise God. I want to talk about it. So praise God, I might not hoop a lot today. I just want y'all to soak this in this morning. Hallelujah. In the Greek, the word for anointing or anointed is charisma. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of something that is smeared on. Praise the Lord. Speaks of oil that is smeared. When you anoint something, you take oil and you smear it. You put it. You make it oily. Amen. Praise the Lord. There you have anointed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when we deal with one being anointed, amen, we must first of all deal with the meaning of what it means to be anointed. Amen. Can I take my time? Yes. And in the Old Testament, there are many examples, praise the Lord, and instances, praise God, of a temporary anointing. Hallelujah. In Exodus, the 30th chapter, around the 25th verse, God, amen, speaks to Moses, amen, at the construction of the tabernacle where God will dwell with his people. And he said, I want you to take these principal spices and I want you to put them together, amen, after the art of the apothecary. And I want you to mix it together to make a special anointing oil. Hallelujah. I want you to use this oil as an anointed oil. Amen. And nobody else can use this oil except those, amen, that are in the tabernacle. Y'all ain't hear me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And he takes this anointing oil. And the Bible says that he anoints all the furniture in the house. He anoints the instruments in the house. He anoints, amen, the wall post. And he anoints, praise the Lord, the table of showbread. And then, praise the Lord, when he gets ready to ordain priests and Levites to serve in the house, he anoints them with that oil. He smears, amen, that oil on them. Nothing is allowed to serve in the tabernacle of God without a man being anointed with that special oil. Yes. Yes. One thing you got to understand, beloved, hallelujah, that everything that happened in the Old Testament was a shadow or a form of what God was going to do in reality in the New Testament. So when you look at this oil, this oil is a symbolic of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Oil is a symbol of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. You can't see the Spirit of God. You can feel it, but you can't see the Spirit of God. And so when the oil is applied, the oil is a symbol, amen, of what the Spirit does. The Spirit acts as an oil agent. Y'all uh -huh. But have you ever had a door that every time you open it up, it's yes. squeaky? It makes no. You're trying to slip in without waking anybody up, and you open it like, and then and the bank ah, wakes up because the door was so loud, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had a a back uh, door up to my car, praise the Lord. And for some reason, the latch on my Lincoln kept getting stuck. And, and I, I just wouldn't let the children get in, in and out of that side because when they would, amen, open that door, amen, praise the Lord, somehow the latch would get stuck and you couldn't. Praise the Lord, shut it. You have to go in and take a screwdriver and push the latch back where it needs to be, and then you can close it. And finally, praise the Lord, I got some WD-40. I got some oil, and I anointed it, praise God. And when I anointed it, it'll lose. I ain't have no more trouble. It opens and closes on its own accord, praise the Lord. Amen. When, 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 when I put that WD-40 on the hinges of that door, praise the Lord, now it, it opens and closes. You don't even know, amen, that it's open and closing. What does oil do? Oil, praise the Lord, causes things that have friction, amen, to run smooth. Amen. The anointing causes a smooth run, amen. Otherwise, there would be friction in your engine. If you don't have the proper amount of oil in your engine, 
engine when, amen, the pistons work against one another, it causes friction. And that friction causes heat. And if you don't have anything, praise God, to stand between the heat, amen, and the moving of the parts, what will happen, it will heat up so bad till the engine will seize. Yeah. Amen. Right. You get locked up and you no longer can use it, praise God. The oil is the thing that makes the difference. Amen, Amen praise God. And it's befitting that God would use oil as a symbol of his anointing. Because, amen, we try to do things in our own human strength and effort and it does not work. It is friction. Have you ever tried to go handle something or straighten out with somebody, something that was going on, and the more you talk, the worse it got? Yes. Yes. Oh, y'all quiet today. Yes. Hey, Amen. The more you dealt with the situation, the worse it got. They just wasn't understanding. They were getting mad. You were getting frustrated. And so you might as well just leave it alone, praise God. And then there are times that you feel called and sent by God to deal with somebody. And when you go by that calling, praise God, and begin to speak with that person, and then all of a sudden it's like their understanding is open and it's just a fruitful conversation. What was the difference? Yes. Hallelujah. You were anointed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The anointing was something, praise the Lord, that was precious. Amen. Y'all in here. Amen. Anointing symbolized by the smearing of the oil. Amen. Praise the Lord. When the children of Israel got ready, amen, to, amen, get a king, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The king was differentiated, amen, by the anointing of oil. Somebody say the anointing of oil. The anointing of oil. Praise the Lord. Whenever they got ready, amen, to set aside a king, praise the Lord. When Saul got ready, in order for him to be declared, amen, hallelujah, the king, amen, Samuel the prophet would take oil and and anoint him, praise God. And the anointing of the oil was symbolized that this man, praise the Lord, was set apart, amen, glory to God, for the office of the king. It was the anointing. Y'all ain't hearing me? Amen. Praise the Lord. When I look, amen, and see, praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen, Saul would later lose his anointing out of disobedience to God. Come on, say amen. Yeah. How many of you remember, praise the Lord, that when Saul would not, amen, kill all of the Amalekites, but he saved the king, praise God, he saved some of the, amen, good stuff, saying that he was going to sacrifice it. And the Lord said, because you didn't obey me, I'm going to reject you. What happened, amen, when he was rejected? The Spirit of God left him, and an evil spirit came in. I mean, the Spirit, the anointing lifted from him. He served as a king, praise God, for about 40 years, amen, but only two or three of those years were done under the anointing. Right. Hallelujah. It was with the anointing lifted that an evil spirit from God was able to come and buffet Saul. It was, amen, under this, amen, praise the Lord, with the anointing lifted, amen, glory to God, it was when the Philistines would come in and cause this man who was under the anointing, amen, when he was first anointed and he heard, amen, that his people were attacked. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you who to anoint. 
And the first one to come out was Eli. Praise the Lord, the oldest. And he was big. And he was tall and he was strong. And he was good looking, like Saul. Yes. Samuel said within himself, surely this is the Lord's anointing. Uh -huh. And God says, no, don't look at it like that. Because I rejected him. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Man looketh on the outward appearance. Yeah. God looks on the heart. In other yeah. words, you're looking for somebody that looked like a king, but I'm looking for somebody that got the heart of a king. Yeah. My God, my anointing is on the heart of a person, praise the Lord. My anointing is not on your idea or your image of what a man, an anointed person should look like. It is on the heart of the person that seek me, praise our God. Oh, y'all not hear me today? The Bible said that the Lord faces toward them that hear his word and tremble after his word. Amen. And I'm concerned today because we are in a church that does not, amen, tremble at the word of God. We don't reveal what God is saying yet. Everybody claims to be anointed. Everybody claims to hear a word from the Lord. In every service you can hear I heard the Lord saying it and, and this is what the Lord is saying. Yet there is no change of life. There is no change of purpose because somebody is lying on God. Amen. God rejected Saul. Hallelujah. Went to David's house and found this little ruddy boy, a man, on the back side of the mountain with the sheep. He come in smelling like sheep. Hallelujah. Didn't look like much. His clothes was nasty looking, you know. Because when you deal with animals, when you deal with sheep, praise God, you're going to smell. Amen. Like they smell, praise the Lord. Come in there, praise the Lord. And when Samuel saw him, the Spirit of God looked at him, made God and spoke to Samuel and said, This is a man in my anointing. Hallelujah. And when he put the horn of oil over David, the seal broke and the oil, the anointing flew. And praise the Lord. When you look at that, amen, the Bible says, amen, that when he was anointed by Samuel, said that the Spirit of God, amen, came on David from that day forward. Amen. There was a favor of the Spirit of God that followed David because of his anointing. Hallelujah. Now, for all of my Bible scholars that will read the Word of God and understand, amen, David was anointed three times. Somebody say three. 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 There were three anointings of David, praise the Lord. He was anointed first of all, amen, when Samuel went to his house. And that first anointing was the inaugural anointing. It was an anointing of sanctification. It was anointing saying that God has set you apart, amen, to be the king. But after he was anointed by Samuel, he did not go and claim the throne. He went back. Amen. And serve his father and serve his brother. Amen. How many of you know you can be anointed and still got to serve? You can be anointed and you still got to clean the church bathroom. You can be anointed and you still got to vacuum the floor. You still got to serve whoever's in authority. Amen. We are in a situation in a time where folk, because they are anointed, they can't hear nobody. They can't serve nobody. Everybody knows everybody. And nobody will submit. Take the time, Scott. Yes, I think I will. Uh -huh. The first anointing was just to point him out and say, my hand is on you. Uh -huh. Everybody that will be used by God has this inaugural anointing. Do you remember the first time God touched you? Do you remember the first time, amen, you were touched by the presence of God? You recognize that there was no other feeling like it in the world. Amen. You recognize, praise the Lord, that there was nothing like being touched by God for the first time. You didn't speak in tongues the first time, praise God. You didn't, amen, run around the church, but, but, but you knew that there was something touching you that was different, amen, than anything you had ever. And let me tell you something. When God touches you in that fashion, it brings a certain fear for God. You know that God is real. And when you understand that God is real, you're not going to do every and any kind of thing, praise the Lord. You ain't even going to play with God. Even if you are not ready to live right, you ain't going to 
won't come up in the church and play with God. Do you know why folk play with God? Do you know why they go to church and sing in the choir, amen, and shout, and then go back to the nightclubs and, and live and do like the devil, praise the Lord? It's because they really have not been touched by God. Because if you really get touched by God, there is a fear for God. You know what God is capable of doing, praise God. You know that God is a real, praise God. Anointing. It's a sanctifying anointing. It's an anointing that sets you apart. See, all of my anointed folk out there know what I'm talking about. Amen. When God puts his hand on you, you can't just do anything. Amen. God lays his hands on you, you can't just say anything. Amen. You can't walk any kind of way. Come on, say amen. amen. When God lays his hands on you, praise our God. Hallelujah. Everybody else can do whatever they want to do, but you got a different mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I, I love you as my friend, but there's, I can't go that far with you. Amen. Because I am anointed. Praise God. God has stepped in and has set me apart. He has smeared, amen, his oily presence over me. I can't get no help up in here. Amen. So he was anointed three times. And the first time was the sanctify and set him apart from being a king. Amen. The second time, praise the Lord, he was anointed by the men of Judah. Amen. Right. Praise the Lord that they decided that they would come and they would follow him. Praise our God. Hallelujah. He was anointed. At this time, praise God, the anointing that he was running off was the anointing that God had given him through Samuel. He was running from Saul with this anointing. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. He, he he praised the Lord, went, praise God, and destroyed the Amorites, praise the Lord, with this anointing that he had. Come on, somebody. Amen. With this anointing, praise God, it allowed him, amen, to stay in touch with God, that even when his leader would come and fight him, praise the Lord, he would not stretch forth his hands against the leader. It was that anointing, amen, that smote his heart, praise the Lord. But how many understand that when it's one thing to be designated as the king, it's a whole new thing when you have to get installed as the king. Yeah. And so now that I'm being installed as the king, I need a stronger anointing, praise God. I need a greater anointing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, to be a king, praise God. As long as I'm following, I'm glad to have that anointing, but I need something greater, amen, to lead God's people. And so he was anointed the second time. Y'all ain't hear me? Amen. And then, praise the Lord, this might be boring to some of y'all, but this is good stuff. Praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then, praise the Lord, when all of the tribes of Israel decided that they would come and submit to David, this would be the first time that Israel had ever been unified all at one time. This was the first time that they were ever all 12 tribes unified. And then until that point, every man did as it was right in his own eyes. They, they, they had judges, but they pretty much did what they wanted to do. But when this king came, when this anointed man of God came, they came to him and said, we're going to submit to you, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible says they anointed him to be king over all Israel. But then the Bible brings in something, praise our God, that a preacher brought out and it made so much sense. The Bible says that when he was anointed the third time, amen, he was 30 years old, praise the Lord. I want you to understand that there are some types of anointing that only comes with maturity, praise God. There are only some types of anointing, amen, that come, amen, when you have got to a season in your life, amen, where you're done with the games and you're done with playing around, Y'all pray for me, because I'm out there. Yes, Lord. And I look at leaders today of the churches. And I don't doubt that they have an anointing of the loose. Uh -huh. I, I don't doubt that they're not anointed. I would be a liar if I said that they're not anointed. But what I am saying, praise the Lord, 
they must don't have that third anointing because that third anointing brings togetherness amongst God's people. When someone is anointed for the purpose of leading God's people, amen, it brings a togetherness. They work at that togetherness and the people submit to that togetherness because they carry that kingly anointing. Y'all quiet on me, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It takes a man of maturity, hallelujah, to carry that kind of anointing. Hallelujah. And it takes a maturity to submit yourself and say, I don't have that kind of anointing. Amen. I know that I am anointed. I know that I can preach. I know that I can, amen, do various different things. But I know, praise the Lord, that this is not my calling. Amen. And not to step in a place that does not belong to you. Amen. Is, praise the Lord, a sign of maturity. And God can use somebody that says, I know I'm not what I need to be to get in that spot. I want more, but you ain't using what is already gave me. You see, God doesn't anoint, praise the Lord, just for the sake of saying you anointed. Everything that is anointed has a purpose for it. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. And, and, and while the Spirit of God strives with a man, the anointing does not, praise the Lord. The anointing, praise God, is tangible, and the anointing is usable, and the anointing is transferable. The anointing is tangible, it is usable, and it is transferable. And once, praise the Lord, you have used the anointing for a certain thing, it is over, praise God. If God anointed you to get up and sing a song to bring in the Spirit of God, He anointed you to do it. And once you fulfilled your assignment, that purpose is up, praise the Lord. And if you continue to stay up alone or overstepping your anointing, you get out of the Spirit and you begin to operate in flesh. And it doesn't matter how gifted or how talented you are. It takes the anointing to move certain things. And that's what's wrong with the church today. We are operating on talents and gifts. And there is nobody moving in the anointing. And the reason why I know we're not moving in the anointing is because we come in one way and leave the same way. Oh, but God stands with your anointing. Oh, 
while. Amen. If you give up your place in God, Satan takes over. Praise the Lord. The Bible says he brings in seven more demons, more wicked than him. And your last state is worse than the first state. Don't play with your anointing. Hallelujah. Don't you play with your anointing. Don't play with your anointing. If God has anointed you, don't play with your anointing. If you have been able to be made partakers of the Spirit of God, don't play with your anointing. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost by doing everything, amen, and anything that you want to do. And then sit there and rely that the grace of God is going to cover you. Amen. God might love you, but he will lift his anointing off of you. God might love you, but he will take his spirit up on y'all in here. Say, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. Take it. I, I know what it's like to see somebody operating, but they have no anointing. Nothing is more sad to see somebody who is a has been. Nothing is more sad than to see somebody, praise the Lord, who is operating on what they used to happen, but they ain't got nothing new. They don't have anything fresh. They're just, amen, operating on skill. God, have mercy on the church. God, help the church, hallelujah, because we can get caught up in it. And folk can be so carnal, beloved, hallelujah, that you don't even know when the spirit leaves the church. You can be shouting and hollering. And because you got your dance on, you think that the Spirit of God is moving. But you don't know when the Spirit of God got up and left. And the Bible says, y'all pray for me. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that when the Spirit of truth is come, he said, I'm going to testify of Jesus. How do I know that people are really anointed? Because the anointing that they have point folk to Jesus. And when you're always talking about yourself, and you're always talking about how good and powerful you are, that is not the anointing. You are lifted up in self. Come on, say amen. I heard the apostle Paul say we preach not ourselves, but Jesus and him crucified.
If you don't believe that it takes an anointing to be effective and to serve God, I'm preaching to my mature Christian today. You babies, y'all might do a little something, but hallelujah. Pray for me. If you don't believe that it takes an anointing to be effective, to do the work for God, you better ask Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible tells me in Luke the fourth chapter, in about verse 18, that he got the book, amen, from the minister. And when he got the book from the minister, hallelujah, open it up. And went to that place of Isaiah 61. And in verse 1, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To preach deliverance to the captives. And the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are born. It took the anointing of Jesus to preach. It took the anointing of Jesus to heal the sick. It took the anointing of Jesus to heal the sick. The anointing. 
it was on him. Oh, yes, it was. Hallelujah. Yes. Huh? Yes. The anointing was on him so bad. Mm -hmm. Till he was laying asleep <laughs> in the hind part of the ship. Uh -huh. Say yeah. Yes. And the Bible said the tempest began to rage. Uh -huh. Ain't that all right? Yeah. And the water began to be inside the ship. Yeah. Disciples had gotten scared. And here was this anointed Jesus laying in the bottom of the ship. Say yeah. And when they got down there to Jesus, they said, Master, don't you care if we perish? And Jesus got up. Ain't that all right? And this anointed Jesus Oh, <laughs> 